we've got some topics. I thought about us just taking those topics and drawing them out of the hat, but we have some semblance of order that we'll try to get to. Yes, ideally topics that everyone is fighting about. These are hotbed issues. Hotbed issues that that's breaking the country apart, and you and I represent in many ways two different points of view. Yeah. And so let's see, as we discuss them, where I, we end up. I don't like to classify people. I don't like to label people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, are, we are apt to do that because we like to go ahead and create our margins and put mm-hmm. people in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you and I come from somewhat different worldviews, different perspectives, mm-hmm. um, different outlooks on life. Um, you would consider yourself a liberal. I would. I would consider myself a conservative. Mm-hmm. You're not a progressive. No, I think I'm more of a liberal. I think yeah. my life... Which I think is a fantastic word. Yeah. I think my life comes from a more liberal agenda. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gay. I'm married. I have two wonderful children that are the light of everything. That whole life would not have come from a conservative agenda. And I think that's why I'm more of a liberal. But I'm, I, uh, I definitely often see and understand a conservative point of view. So do you think, do you think, and this is not on one of our topics, but, but you mentioned something there. Do you think that it is impossible, if not very, very difficult, to be living the lifestyle that you live, your choice of life, from a, if you were coming from a conservative background? Do you think I, that conservatives make it hard for you to be you? I think they did. I think that they, I think it's changed. I think the whole world has changed. Yeah. I mean, I would say the hardest part about being gay and the thing that I loathed about myself and the fact that I felt this way, that I knew I was different, I didn't want it, I desperately, desperately did not want to be gay, is I wanted a family. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be married. And I think the hardest part about being gay in the 80s when I was coming to adolescence was that I would never get married. It wasn't an option. I'd never have children. And so I'm living this life that I did not even dream of. And I think that's, that's a source point of my hope yeah. in general, is that I'm literally living a life that I never even dreamt of. And so I think at the time growing up, yes, I think conservatives were much less accepting. I think that has changed. I absolutely think that I you don't think feel this. You think it's conservatives or, or a, a more of a religious perspective? I think they were mixed in the day. And again, I'm talking about the voices coming at me, and we'll talk about this, from screens, mm-hmm. that it was generally the Christian conservative that had a problem with it. Um, and I think that, you know, my own parents had a problem with it at the time. You know, family members had a problem with it. So yeah. it was a different era. And I think we move forward in certain ways and, and attitudes change. So I don't feel, I would have to say, I don't feel any judgment when I'm around conservatives these days. That was my next question. No, no. Yeah. No. Because, because I, I've, I've heard a lot of people from say that same thing from that same perspective. So I was yeah. wondering from yours if you were feeling, if you ever felt any of that. I think sometimes I feel like the, the moral intolerance that I feel from the far left sometimes, mm-hmm. I feel reminds me of the moral intolerance I felt from the right 20 years ago. And I think that's where they learned it from. Really? I really get that similar feeling. You think it still comes back from the screens and the com- talking heads that are in your ear? I think it comes back from the screens. I think it comes back from this sort of like, I'm not willing to engage you. And I think you know, 20, 25 years ago, I definitely felt from certain Christian conservatives, it was like, I'm not engaging you on this conversation about who you are, your lifestyle, your background. I'll just pray for you. And yeah. it's the sense of like from the, from the far right and left now, far left, that I'm not willing to engage you. Yeah. I just know I'm morally right, and I know you're morally wrong. <laughs> and that, that's, and it reminds me, it's so funny how it's flipped, that I yeah. really feel that same feeling of like, oh, we can't talk about this. Yeah. Now is coming from the far left. Interesting. Let's talk about the far left and, and what I see, it, that something that's bothering me in, in regards to this issue with Israel and Palestine, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, or what we're seeing happening in the Middle East. Now, you, you come from a, a Muslim place of faith. Yep. Would I you, was born in Pakistan, too. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. But you, you, would you... Let me see if I can offer a delineation or differentiation that may not make sense with this question, but w- do you consider yourself a Muslim, do you, but you're not an Islamist? No, I'm a Muslim, and there are many, many segments of Islam. It's right. sort of like Lutherans and Catholics and LDS is that they're all sort of under this Christian umbrella, but they're very, very different. So I'm what's known as an Ismaili. They, it's in the Shia. When it goes Shia Sunni, I'm a Shia. But in our faith, and there's about 18 million of us worldwide, when we go into the mosque, facing the congregation are a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. And prayers are led by the man, then the woman, then the man, then the woman. Women have to be equal. This is from the late 1800s. I have never known a world 
in my mosque, my mosque, where women and men are not equal. And yet no one's ever heard of us, but they've seen all the images of the men in the sludgy colors, all like bowing together, which we don't do. Um, so I'm a Muslim, but I'm a very progressive sect of, of, of yeah. Islam. You, you would be, I would say, almost like Unitarian Universalist in the Christian faith, maybe? Sort of, sort of. Or a, You're or Presbyterian, a, or a, yeah, sort of like... Li- PC USA, more of a liberal side of yeah, the Christian Yeah, yeah like I, I drop off my kids now to religious classes, religious cultural classes on Saturdays, yeah. and we're a gay couple and no one cares. Yeah. See, when I say the word Islamist, for those who would be listening and if they don't know that, that's that's a person who wants to press their Islamic theocracy yes. on the the culture and the laws and the mores of a land. And even though people see a lot of footage of them, and the screaming and the hysterics, they are not percentage-wise a lot of us. I mean, there's billion of us, yeah. and most are just people, Indonesia is a Muslim nation, people just going to work, trying to provide for their families, the crazies, and, and it's sort of like the white supremacists. Like, you constantly see this whole, like, on the left, this idea of everyone's part of white supremacy. Yeah. I don't really think that the people actually wish ill and harm to people of color so are I, that many. I would say this. I would say this. I would say, and again, I'm saying this in relation because we're headed towards this topic about the, mm-hmm. you know, the Middle East, particularly Israel and Gaza. Okay. So I would say that while there are, there are Muslims who love and pursue peace, I don't think Islam by its fundamental nature is a peaceful religion. I think Islam is a religion of peace. I think it becomes that thing of where does religion end and politics begin? That I don't think there are that many differences in, and, and, and talk to people who are Israeli and talk to people who are Palestinian who work side by side, live by, and date each other. Yeah. It's but, a but political again, those, thing. But again, those who are Islamists, which again, Isla- I understand. Islamists that's, is a very specific That yeah. is a specific sect of the Muslim. It's not even a sect. It's a, it's a, it's a label that's been created for those who absolutely are pushing that above all we else. We would call them extremists. Extremists, in thank regards you, yes. to that. We would call them extremists. They would want you dead. Probably. Yeah, they would. They, I mean, they would. They, I mean, Hamas would want you dead. Probably, I don't... There's I mean, no probably. They would want you dead. They would de- for they definitely reasons. want me dead because I'm not, I'm not towing a certain line of, yeah. of all us all the time. Yeah. Correct. Because I don't think I don't think I don't think that Hamas wants necessarily the Palestinians that live amongst them to be alive either. I think they use them as necessary pawns. I think they use them as necessary pawns. I think desperation breeds insanity. So let's talk about that because because I, I my premise there is, and again I'm no defender of the governments of man. I, I'll call out Israel. I'll call out Pal, I, mm-hmm. Palestinian. I'll call out the U.S. government, and I do on a regular basis. I know. Okay, I'm not a fan of our government. Um, as it stands now. The premise of it, the foundations of it, the constitutionality of the republic, yes. The folks running it now, I think every president in the United States for the last 60 years should have been impeached. (laughs) I mean, constitutionally, I think every single one of them should have been. But when I say Israel, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those God's chosen people and therefore they get a free pass to do whatever they want to do. All governments of men have committed atrocities. They create, um, they create nightmares in mm-hmm. in the midst of people they do mm-hmm. and they and, and I've heard you say it that Hamas arose because of something that was happening now my premise there is there are people who say well it's a it's a battle over the land I don't believe that it's a battle over the land okay because Israel represents less than 1% of the Middle East it's it's tiny it's a tiny little spot um, it is literally uh, five sixths of 1% in terms of land the, what they want is they want the Jews dead. I now now Hamas. again Hamas yes. does those who's, who are Islamic extremists do. Yes, but I would say there there are four things that both sides have in common. By the way, they are seeing the absolute worst of each other yep. on their screens. They're seeing not seeing the worst of themselves, and I think that these governments represent fewer and fewer of the people that they're supposed to represent, mm-hmm. and their actions are paid for by the average person. I don't think the average Palestinian wants Jews gone. I absolutely don't. I don't think the average Israeli wants Muslims gone. I think that this is literally a locked in of extremes. And but, by the way, Israelis themselves were protesting their government since January, saying it's too extreme, it's too hard lined. So the, the 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 it was this was a tightening and a tightening of something that snapped. But I absolutely, to be clear, 
I, there's no part of me that supports Hamas. There's no part of me that does not condemn what they did, the brutal atrocities. But it's not that I can look at this outside of a vacuum, that this is a result of something, something horrible. I really would love Hamas well, but, never to But exist. I don't think it's a modern result. I think it's I think it's an age-old result. This is something that has been coming on and on in different forms and iterations throughout the ancients and up till now. I, I think that this is... But, but, the, but the force that was trying again, to get rid the of... the hate has bred more and more but hate. But the, the people trying to get rid of the, the Jews in the 1940s were not Muslims. They were Germans and Christians. So I do agree that there's been this attack on the Jewish people again and again and again, which is so funny because I went to Jewish schools and they're literally my people. Like, uh, well, you, you said you say they were Germans. They were specifically Nazis. They they weren't again, which is which is a subset. But they weren't Muslims. They Germans weren't Muslims. And, I'm saying this and, is not an age old conflict between specifically well, Muslims it, it trying is to eradicate Jews. If you the consider, Jews. if you go far enough back and you consider the Assyrians, you consider the Babylonians, the, you know, and and then you know up into the Greek. Greeks and the Romans, you know, the Greeks and Romans obviously weren't Muslims either. Mm -hmm. But again, this is those who are Zionists would say, yes, we're the most persecuted people in the history of man. I would not disagree. Yeah. But I and, and to my life of me, I cannot understand why. Because of the circumstances of my life, so, I was raised among Jews. So I yeah. don't see the boogeyman there that other people do. But I would say that, that right now in this conflict, I do think that is primarily political. So, so here's the thing. Here's my thing. If the if the Jews said today, the Jews in Israel said today, here's what we're going to do. We're going to lay down our arms and we're not going to fight. Mm -hmm. They would be dead tomorrow. I don't know if the vast majority of Palestinians would. No, but Hamas would. Hamas would. And Iran would. So, so again, if you if you take Gaza out of the equation, we know that Iran would, and Iran's but you a can't far take bigger Gaza player. Because right now, what's going to happen is this repeated bombing is going to take well, all I'm of just Gaza saying, out of the equation. Yeah. If, if there were no Gaza, Iran would. They want them dead. They, if, if if Israel said today, we're, no more Iron Dome, we're laying down our arms, Iran would say, okay, then that's it for Israel. You're dead. I would agree with you. And and then they would and continue. I actually think Iran is a much greater threat to global stability. Well, again, Hamas has no power. It has no teeth without yes, the backing. I would agree. Without the jaws of Iran. I would agree. And when we do dealing on the sides with Iran, we end up putting ourselves yeah. in very precarious positions. So you and I, we, we both come from this one foundational perspective, and that is we value human life. Absolutely. Okay. So my perspective is if the Jews wanted to obliterate Palestine, they could. People say, well, they're in an open air prison. Well, at least they're alive in an open air prison. If it were left up to Hamas, there would be nothing living in Israel if it was not Hamas. I would agree. I mean, I, I don't, again, I think the open air prison concept, the idea of the desperation that comes, we were just talking about how stressed I am about something that's happening with my daughter. Mm -hmm. If you were a parent or someone watching the atrocities happening over these years with children, it would build up an extreme reaction. And so whether they're alive, although most of them are under the poverty line, most of them don't have opportunity. If they want any, they have to cross over. So I don't know if we can compare and contrast. Well, I think we're looking at that from a first world perspective. From a first world perspective, I. but I really do think that, that that living conditions are often so inhumane that they're causing these extremist movements to grow. But by the way, there is no Hamas in West Bank. So there's still atrocities in the West Bank. There's still raids. There's still people disappearing. There's still deaths unaccounted for. And there is no Hamas there. And so often Gaza is brought up, but the West Bank is a zone where there is no Hamas. Yeah. And so why is there this treatment there? Because there is no threat of Hamas there. And so I often will look at the West Bank and look at that as the test case, because there is no boogeyman there. Yeah. And yet it's still the treatment is so severe. But for, for me, as a and we're going to go to a break here in a second. But for me, as a person who values human life, mm -hmm. who sees it from the perspective of life matters um, at all stages, all ages, then then um, I have to look at the person, I have to look at the group of people who says, at least we are choosing a merciful route in saying maybe we're dropping pamphlets before we're dropping bombs, maybe we're dropping knock bombs that are dummy bombs to let you know to get out of the way, versus people who are hiding their munitions underneath a kindergarten or a hospital, because they don't value life. They value death over life. I would agree, but I also think that point of view and that extremism comes from the extreme conditions that they've been living in. I don't think a person grows up born. We're talk, we talk all, often about you know abortion and that every life is precious. That beginning of life does not have that mindset. That comes from extremism but, over but days you, and, years and years and years and years. Don't you think that if 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 let's say Hamas again, mm -hmm. that's the buzzword. 
if Hamas said, you know what, we've been converted, we value life now, don't you think that those extreme conditions would be lessened? That they would have an easier life if they said our worldview is what has caused us to live in these extreme conditions because that's why Jordan, that's why Egypt says, no, we've drawn a red line. They cannot come into our country because we know what they bring with them. I, again, the West Bank is then a different alter- situation where there is no Hamas. Mm-hmm. Why are those extreme conditions in the West Bank as well? Well, again, it comes from an extreme worldview. Agreed. I, I think there's an extreme worldview but that it's, values it, death but over But it's both life. sides. And again, I would point to the own citizens of Israel who are protesting their government yeah. since January saying this is too extreme. Yeah. And I, I do think that these leaders, and again, we could talk about America as well, are becoming more extreme, and they're not representing the majority of the people they're supposed to represent. Yeah. And these big swings that they do, are the, the costs are paid for by the average person, which I think is grossly unfair because I don't think that they represent the average person. And then all the footage of the protests from January, the Israelis were saying, this is too extreme. This yeah. is too extreme. And it was a ticking time bomb, and here we've gone off. 